Hello, hello. Hey guys, I want to apologize. I closed the meeting and then I went back to my previous meeting and I was like, where is everybody at? Where is everybody? Oh my God, they didn't show up. But it just turns out that I was in the wrong meeting. So I'm sorry about that. Hello and welcome. How are you guys doing? Hello, take care. Hello, hello. Did you guys survive the hurricane? Yes, hello, good evening. Hey, hello, good evening. So far, so far we are, we're surviving, no? Excellent, excellent to hear. You know, there was a lot of rain where I live, a lot of flooding, but thank God everything turned out okay. And they say that the hurricane is now moving away. So hopefully, you know, hopefully it stays that way. ¿Qué tal, qué tal? Welcome, bienvenidos todos. Welcome. Thank you, take care. Oh my God, can you guys believe that is day number three? Yes, sir. How time flies when you have a good time. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. Welcome aboard. We're going to wait a few moments, well, maybe a minute or two before we get started. And then we're going to get started. Maybe somebody else comes in. Hey, I want to ask you a question before we get started. Um, yeah. How well do you guys remember the different portions of grammar? Like, for example, if I ask you, what is a noun? Would you be able to, you know, say it on the spot and identify it in a sentence as well? Yes. Yes. Some of the <laughs> a noun. A noun. Uh, and the reason I'm asking you is because yeah. we're coming into a portion of the modules or, well, the module or the modules that automatically assumes that we already know some, uh, I want to say some rules and some specific wording. And so what I would like is for all of us to be like on the same book or on the same page mm -hmm. in regards to what is what. And everybody should be able to say, you know, that's a noun, that's a pronoun, that's a relative pronoun. And then for you guys to have an idea exactly what it is, because I don't know if you guys have noticed that most of the stuff that's coming up is just direct exercises. You know, it tells you, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to work on this. Um, we're going to do exercises doing this. But they don't explain to you what the rule is. So... So I wanted to take a little bit of time to cover some of those, but I also don't want to do something that's too basic, you know? Right. Now, I think, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think we can, you know, we, we check her out. You can, during, okay. During. We can do a quick review? Yeah. Just... All right. All right, well, I like that, I like that. You know, guys, you know I like to explain rules and regulations anyways. All right, so we can do that. We can do that. Now, let me tell you why I like to explain these things. Hay muchos casos where you have to say something, but it doesn't make sense in English. You know, if we're doing the translation from Spanish to English, sometimes it doesn't make sense, man. And then somebody else comes and they tell you, no, you're supposed to say it this way. But they don't tell you why you're supposed to say it a certain way. And so the reason why that happens is because in Spanish, we don't have all of these rules and regulations. And, and you know, you don't have a rule that's created. And then there, there's another rule that, that que quita la otra. So it, 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 in English, there is. There's a lot of rules that get overwritten or that another rule can come and totally forget about rule number one and now you have to apply rule number two. And so, mm -hmm. I, you know, that's why, that's why I like to explain it because 
in a lot of the work that we do, we just tell you, hey, look, do this because it's a noun. You know, do this because it's a pronoun. But we don't tell you the rules behind it. So I, I want to uh, thank you. Thank you for, you know, thank you for, for letting me know. And I have something put together. Well, I had I, I, something that I use all the time. And I want to maybe take a few minutes at the beginning of our, of our class to kind of go over it. Because that way we can move along with the rest of the stuff that we have to look at. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and share. Um, bueno, before we get started, antes de comenzar, how are you guys doing with the platform? ¿Cómo les está yendo con el platform? Yes, that's fine. That's good. You guys are, you guys are moving along? Yes, we finished already. I finished oh. already the, the section two, right? Section, oh, section two is already done. Hey, well done, yes, sir. Yes. Well done, well done. Um, All right, uh, so. I have a problem. And what was the problem that you were seeing? Uh, with the section three, uh, in the exercise about listening. Okay, oh I, my goodness. All the way to section three? Nice. Yeah. All right. I, right. I wrote something and I don't Did, know what happened. Okay. It's bad, always oh, bad. All right, we can we can we can definitely try to cover section three, if if we'll take you know maybe maybe we can take some uh, five minutes towards the end. If we don't get there, I'm gonna give you my phone number, so that we can uh, add each other to WhatsApp, and then that way you can send me screenshots and I can send you some screenshots back, and that way we can help each other in terms of the you know the the knowledge checks. Um, the 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 midterm exam and then the final exam, and okay. if you have any questions in general, so so let's do that. Let me let me go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and put it in the chat section. Okay. Let me see here. Hold on, hold on. All right, there, there you go, guys. Um, we usually create a group, but this time around, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I don't know if there's a group. I don't know if I was added. I don't know what happened, right? So, I put my phone number on here. Yes, it is para el WhatsApp. WhatsApp. All right. And hopefully we can check those out. Grab my number, everybody, and add me on there in case you guys have questions or in case you guys need help with specific stuff in regards to the platform. All right. I'm going to begin sharing so that we can look at section number one. For everybody who joined, thank you very much for joining. Welcome to day three, and here we are. All right, so, chequecitos, right? As long as you have your chequecitos, you should be okay. We started yeah. off with turning down your TV, which is a conversation. The two-part verbs, what was the other name, or actually, what was the, the original name for the two-part verbs? Phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs, correct, correct. And so, what is a phrasal verb? The verb plus particle. Verb, verb, okay. So these are, they're also called compound words. And what it includes is two, right? Two separate words creating a new one. Okay, okay. Um, there's also another form of saying phrasal verbs, which is um, idioms. There, there's some idioms that have phrasal verbs, so that's why they call them idioms as well. Idioms. Um, from there, we started working on pronunciation and the stress on two-part verbs. Two-part verbs. Do you guys remember what the rule was for the stress? Where do I put the stress? Where? Yeah. 
where do we put the stress? Or how does that work? I think it was over here. Yeah, here, here, here it is. So, if the phrasal verb is describing an action, then the stress goes on the first portion, which is called a particle. Right. Is that, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got that. Sorry, I, this thing moved a little bit. Sorry. When the phrasal verb is describing an action, the stress will be on the particle, which is the second portion of the word. If you are using a noun or an adjective, then it is on the first portion. And this was the examples that we used. These are the verbs, which is the second portion. This is the particle, which is also the second portion. And the nouns, which is the first part. Okay. So that's where we left it off. We had some exercises that we were doing, hang out, take out, break up. And then we did the, the worksheets as a practice. And today we're gonna move right into using models. Yeah. Explain to you guys what models are and then we're gonna go from there. But before we get there, I wanted to talk to you guys about this here. One second, let me see, let me find it. Here it is. Yeah, these are the ones. These are the ones that I use. All right. So, this is a quick review. This is for you guys. Uh, most of us, when we first started to learn English, depending on where we started to learn English, they usually, st they, they usually start with grammar, a lot of grammar. Y te bombardean con grammar, right? Now, the reason why they do this is because grammar is so important, you know? You could learn to speak English, and a lot of people say, I learned English in, in for example, in the streets, right? So I speak English, but it's from the streets. What the hell does that mean? And, you know, when somebody says, I speak English from the streets, is it different, you know? If, is street English different from house English? And so what happens is the reason they call it street English is because none of these rules apply to street English. You know, have you guys ever heard a movie where people say, I ain't going in, I ain't going into that house? Yeah. You know, so they're like, damn, he sounds so cool. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He doesn't sound cool. He sounds bad. It sounds terrible. It's bad English, right? And so street English really means that there are no rules being applied. And so it makes it sound really weird when you hear somebody say it. So we have rules, a lot of rules. And so if you are going to learn English in an effective way, where the conversation level is very high, where your communication level is high, um, where you want to have somebody listen to you and understand everything that you're saying, pretty much hold a conversation, then you, you need to keep these rules in mind and you have to apply them, okay? So you guys are going to see some of these quite often in what we're doing. We're going to start off with, you know, some of the basics. A noun, simple. What is a noun? What does a noun do? ¿Qué hace una noun? A word that represents person, places, or things. Right? All right. So in a sentence, if I ask you to look for the noun, what are you going to be looking for? You're going to be looking for the okay. person, the place, or the thing. Okay. And that right there will be your noun. So some examples of a noun. A lion. Mm. Uh, el león, cake, 
computer, bravery, mile, joy. These are some examples of nouns. Everybody okay so far? Hasta ahí estamos bien, ¿verdad? Yes. Okay. Ay, teacher, pero eso ya yo lo sabía desde hace mucho tiempo. Correcto. We mm -hmm. all knew this stuff. Yes, yes. All right. What is a pronoun? Bueno, a pronoun is going to replace a noun. a noun. ¿Por qué? In English, there's no repetition. In English, no hay un valga la redundancia and it makes it okay. No, 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 get away from that. You know, in Spanish, in Spanish, because we have, I don't know why, and then somebody comes along and says, oh, valga la redundancia, and then it says the things, you know, twice. And that should be okay. Well, in Spanish it is okay, but in English it's not. Can't repeat yourself. If you repeat yourself, it shows lack of vocabulary. So what you try to do is replace. You can't say Jack and Jill again. You have to change it. You have to remove them. You have to change them for a pronoun. So, Jack met Jill in Boston. He first saw her in a Chinese restaurant. Ah, fantastic sentence. ¿De quién estamos hablando? Jack. Jack, Jack and Jill. But... I didn't repeat the names. Thank you. Okay. So you guys have to remember that pronoun. So when we talk about a pronoun, usually mm -hmm. you're going to find them on the second verse of that sentence because there is no repetition. We use pronouns so that we don't repeat ourselves. All right. All right. Okay. Then we go into adjectives. This one's easy. What does an adjective do? ¿Qué hace un adjective? I describe. Right now. Describe something. Yeah, describe something. Because you can describe anything. You can describe a car. You can describe a person. You can say that that person is cheerful. You can say that that person is old. El teacher. Ah, está viejo. Está old. All right, you can say it. These are all examples of adjectives, right? Old, green, cheerful grumpy, angry, creído, right? We were talking about arrogant. These are all examples of adjectives. Estamos bien hasta aquí. Everybody all right? So Everybody okay so far? Everybody good? Yes. All right. That. All right. Yeah. And then, so we had been looking, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys probably looked into relative pronouns. A relative pronoun. Now, if I ask you what is a relative pronoun, more than likely, what I don't want to hear is, ah, well, it's a, it's a pronoun with a relative. <laughs> yes and no, right? Yes and no. Yes, because it's kind of related, but at the same time, it's not. It's, it does something else. The rule is that a relative pronoun usually will start a adjective clause. So if you guys are using any type of clause, específicamente un adjective clause, then in order for you to use the adjective clause, you need to use a relative pronoun. So what is a relative pronoun? Well, words like that. Which, who, whom, and whose. You guys okay so far with the relative pronoun? Yes. Yeah. Come with, I'm, I'm good, teacher, with relative pronoun, but now I'm stuck because I don't know what an adjective clause is. What the hell is an adjective clause? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Let me go ahead and get into that. All right. Some terms that you guys are going to be hearing are subjects and objects and possessives. The subject is de que estamos hablando when you guys are putting together a sentence. What do you want to talk about? So for example, here. Here, I'm talking about a phone book. What phone book? I'm talking about the New York phone book. Ese ahí se acaba de convertir en my subject. All right, what do you have to say about that book? Well, it contained 22 Hitlers 
before World War II. Ah, o sea, que habían Hitlers en los Estados Unidos. Sí, sí, había. Y después de la Segunda Guerra, ya no, ya no, ya se quitaron el nombre. ¿no? Yo me tuve que cambiar mi nombre. Antes me llamaba Saca. Ahora ya no puedo usar el nombre Saca, fíjense. <risa> the New York phone book is the subject. Y luego le sigue the rest, the explanation, right? So the subject, I want you guys to think. And it could be a person. It could be a thing. It could be whatever you want it to be. Pero tiene que estar en esa sentence. All right? So, subject, like a noun, they always have to be part of a sentence. Así que ojo con eso. Object is a little bit different. Now, the object is a noun, but it could also be a pronoun. It just depends on what you're using it. Ahora, an object usualmente is going to be used in conjunction with a verb or a preposition. Actually, a preposition or a verb los manda. ¿verdad? Un preposition or a verb es el mandoncito de esta relación. So, you guys will always see a verb or a preposition and that one or these two will usually tell you what that object is going to do or be. So it's usually governed. ¿verdad? Lo manda un verb or una preposition. And some of the examples, porque there's three types of objects. Está el direct object. Y el ejemplo es, I know him. Está el indirect object, que sería, give her the prize. Her would be indirect. Y está el object of a preposition, que sería sit with them. Them sería aquí la porción que estamos buscando. ¿Ok? Object. The object could be a noun or a pronoun. And there are three types of objects. Direct, indirect, and object of a preposition. Those are the rules. We have possessives. Ahora, con possessives, these are easy, right? Cuando ustedes vean una apostrophe S, eso significa que the ball belongs to this boy. The boy's ball. Y se pronuncia boys como que si es plural. No hay cambio ahí eh, ninguno. The boy's ball. Y es como que estuvieras diciendo, the, well, the boys' ball, right? The boys' ball. Se puede ocupar plural, se puede ocupar singular. Puedes ocupar solo el apóstrofe. Y la pronunciación es exactamente la misma. The boys' ball. The boys' ball. The boys' ball. So you guys can use the same. Tenemos los possessive pronouns. Mine, yours, his, hers, its, ours, and theirs. We have the determiners. My, your, his, her, its, our, and theirs. Ahora, ¿cuál es la regla con estos? Bueno. If you guys are going to use mine, yours, his, y cualquiera de estos acá, no hay necesidad de explicar nada más. All you have to do is say, hey, man, that is mine. Leave it alone. Y ya la persona entiende que cualquier cosa que él está tocando la va a dejar ir y entiende de que es tuya. Si tú ocupas my, your, his y todos los que están aquí abajo, you have to add something to it to make it more yours. Por ejemplo, una manzana que dejaste en la mesa. You left an apple on the table, somebody comes along and they try to grab it. And you tell them, hey man, don't touch that. That is my. No se oye bien. You have to complete it with that is my apple. That is my car. That is my pencil. 
So you always have to add something more to it for it to work. <coughs> Mine, yours, and his, no se necesita, pero my, your, and his, ahí sí. You need a little bit more to it, right? So, ojo con estos, ojo con estos. Especialmente cuando estás ocupando his. Porque sometimes you can leave it alone, sometimes you can't, right? All right. ¿Alguna pregunta acerca de subjects, objects, or possessives? Everybody uh, good? Teacher, yes. Podría repetirlo, pero en español, la última parte. Esta de aquí, los determiners, o las dos. Ajá. Las dos. Las dos, pero okay. en español. Sí. Si usted, si usted va a ocupar la palabra mine, yours, or his, lo que ocurre es que como son bien fuertes, son palabras fuertes, son palabras que determinan a quién le pertenece algo. Entonces, usted la puede usar solita. Usted puede decir, hey, that is mine. Y ya no tiene que decir nada más. Lo puede dejar así. Y la persona que, con la cual usted está interactuando va a entender que eso es de usted. Y ya no se lo va a tocar. Pero las que están aquí abajo, las palabras my or your, estas se conocen como weak pronouns. Entonces, porque son débiles, se necesita algo más para reforzar. Entonces, si usted va a decir, si usted va a ocupar la palabra my, por ejemplo, hey, that's my apple, usted tiene que decir la palabra apple. Usted no puede decir, hey, that's my, porque no se escucha bien y no le está dejando saber a la persona de qué es lo que usted está hablando. Entonces, si usted va a ocupar esta palabra, la M y la Y, que es my, entonces usted tiene que reenforzarla con otra palabra. Por ejemplo, manzana. Es mi manzana. It's my apple. Y así lo tiene que decir. It's my apple, leave it alone. Si usted va a ocupar estas que están aquí abajo. Ahora, si usted va a ocupar las que están aquí arriba, no necesita decir la palabra manzana. Puede dejarla solita. ¡Ey! Eso es mío. Y ahí quedó. ¡Hey! That is mine. And that's it. You don't have to say anything else. Ok. Gracias. Ok. Yeah. okay. Excelente. Entonces quedamos aquí. Ahora, subject, object, possessives. Y, como habíamos men mencionado las cláusulas, ¿verdad? Cláusulas, there's, there's only two clauses, pero cada de estas cláusulas tienen algunas, algunas otras cositas que se le pueden agregar. Eh, por ejemplo, el de, el de nosotros, eh, nosotros estuvimos viendo, creo que teníamos unas a donde hablábamos acerca de el clause. A ver, déjenme buscar. Explicaba. Esta de aquí. El adjective clause. Ahora. Esta es la regla que les estaba mencionando. Si ustedes van a tener un adjective clause, necesitan tener el relative pronoun that. Pero puede ser that, which, who, whom, whose. Todo depende de lo que tú quieras decir. Entonces, con eso, llegamos a la cláusula, or a clause in general. What is a clause? Bueno, a clause is a group of words. A group of words, and they include always, always, a subject and a verb. Y lo que hace es toma la forma de alguna otra regla. Por ejemplo, a clause can be used to be or to create an adjective, an adverb, or a noun. So, how does that look? Well, imagine that you have the sentence, my friend who has autism is brilliant at quizzes. En ese caso, nosotros lo que estamos haciendo es estamos creando y estamos ocupando un clause. And we're using it to create an adjective. Same thing happens for noun and same, same thing is going to happen for adverb. So, what is a clause? 
It is a group of words that will always include a subject and a verb y se ocupa para crear un adjective, un adverb, or a noun a donde no hay. So it's like a fake noun, a fake adverb, and a fake adjective. Pero ustedes lo van a ver muy seguidito. There's a lot of clauses that we can see. With the clauses, el que nosotros vemos, bueno, hay, hay tres tipos de cláusulas. Está el noun clause, está el adjective clause, y está el adverbial clause. I don't know if you guys remember any of these. El adverbio, que es uno de que nosotros vemos más seguido aquí, es, por ejemplo, si tú vas a ocupar, si tú, si tú vas a ocupar la palabra when. And so, if you want to use when, así se llama la cláusula. La cláusula se llama adverbial clause for time. That is the name of the rule. Adverbial clause for time. And if you're using that rule, you can use the word when. Aquí está, miren. When. And so how do you use it? Well, if you're looking at a sentence, I stopped believing in Santa Claus when my mother took me to see him in a department store and he asked me for my autograph. Y aquí está. This is a clear example of adverbial clause for time using the word when. Ahora. There are two types of clauses that you guys will see most commonly. Independent clause and a dependent clause. An independent clause will stand by itself. It doesn't need anything else to make sense. No necesita nada más para crear o dejarte saber con lógica qué es lo que está pasando. El dependent clause sí necesita algo más. Necesita ayuda para dejarte claro qué es lo que está pasando. So, we have independent clause, which is a standalone portion of a sentence that does not need any more help. Y tenemos el dependent clause, que este no puede estar el solito, necesita ayuda, necesita otra parte. Y estos son los ejemplos. Si yo te leo una porción de esta sentence, if I read to you the independent clause, the patrol had spotted the sniper. The patrol had spotted the sniper. ¿Qué te acabo de decir? ¿Qué te estoy tratando de decir? Soldados, va. Soldiers on patrol. So, the patrol had spotted the sniper. And that's enough. You, you can leave it like that. Puedes, con, puedes seguir con who was hiding in an attic. And now it makes a lot more sense. However, si yo solo te digo who was hiding in an attic, entenderías tú de qué te estoy hablando. El que se estaba escondiendo en el ático. Ajá. Ajá. No entiendo de qué estás hablando. So, in a sentence... There's going to be cases where you have two independent clauses y cada una puede quedarse solita. No necesita la vida de la otra. Hay sentences que comienzan with a dependent clause y terminan con un independent clause. Pero en la mayoría de los casos, ustedes van a ver que se comienza con el independent clause y se termina con el dependent clause. Y esas son las cláusulas. A ver, 
¿Cuántos tipos de cláusulas existen? Two. Two, that's it, right? What's the name of the first one? Independent. Independent clause. clause. Independent clause. What's the name of the second one? Dependent. Dependent clause. Dependent clause. Okay. Okay. Teniendo ya esas cláusulas, cualquiera de estas dos cláusulas pueden ser the noun clauses, an adjective clause, or an adverbial clause. So, ojo con eso, ¿verdad? ojo con eso. All right. So now, we go into our specific topic, which was the models. A ver, a ver, a ver. Rapidito, ¿quién me dice que es un model? A model. Models. Who remembers? Models. What are models? Who do you? What do they do? The more formal, formal way to, to, to ask something to do. Okay, uh, yeah, we, we can accept that. They give additional information about the function of the main verb that comes after it, right? So some of the models that you guys have to think about that are used most commonly for us is can, could, may, might, should, ought to, must, have, well, no, have to, will, shall, would. and would. would. Uh -huh. Ahora, ojo, cada uno de estos tiene su propio su propia manera de ocuparlo. If you tell somebody that they have to do something, este usualmente causa un poco de, 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 de pushback. Porque si ustedes recuerdan, have to es lo tenés que hacer. You have to do it. Tenés que hacerlo. Y usualmente esta es una orden directa. ¿Quién te da esta orden? Puede ser tu mamá, tu papá. O tu jefe. Porque yo ya soy un adulto. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do anything. ¿va? I'm an adult already. Pero los que sí, a los que sí le haces caso es a tu jefe. Si él te dice, limpia ese techo con un cepillo de dientes, ¿qué le vas a decir vos? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Ah, ¿cuál, cuál, ¿Cuál cepillo de dientes uso? El mío, el mío. ¿Cuál uso, jefe? <risa> In ese caso, you have to do it because it's a direct order, right? So, si una, si una conversación no es así, o sea, no es entre un jefe y, y un compañero de trabajo, usualmente no se ocupa have to. ¿verdad? Tengan mucho cuidado con el have to. Eh, can, cuando tú dices can, acuérdense que can significa ¿puedo yo hacerlo? O sea, eh, ¿soy capaz de hacerlo? ¿Puedo yo recoger alguna pelota con las dos manos? Bueno, no I sé. Can. ¿Tenés las dos manos? I can do it. Right, right. Can you physically do it? Eh, no sé si ustedes se recuerdan. Eh, preguntas en la escuela. Bueno, si ustedes tomaron las clases, fueron a una clase, a un teacher, y al teacher le dijeron, can I go to the bathroom? Y el teacher te contestó, I don't know. Can you? <laughs> Porque físicamente... Yo no sé si puedes ir al baño. Entonces, la pregunta no tendría que ser, can I? Aquí may. tendría que ser, may. may. Porque lo que tú estás pidiendo es, oh, ajá, permiso. May I please go to the bathroom? Sure, te dice el teacher, todo contento que supiste cómo ocupar may. Así es que, ojo con estas. <risa> These are very important. Models are very important to what we're doing. Because we're talking about everyday conversations. In everyday conversations, you use all of these. Ojo, ojo con eso. So, let's talk about some of these rules. Rule number one. There's three rules. Todo tiene regla, ¿verdad? Este teacher solo son reglas, puchiga. Everything, everything has a rule. And remember... Then, once you learn the rules, 
somebody creates another rule. No, perdón. Somebody already created another rule to help you forget this one that you just learned. So, so keep that in mind. Three basic rules to follow. Use the model verb as is. No lo cambies. Don't make any changes. Leave it as is. Don't change the form to turn it into present, future, or past. Don't add anything to it, like an S or an ED or an ING. How does that sound? Well, here we have an example. Joan can swim. Joan can swim. There's no need to change that. You can't say Joan can swim. You can't say things like he might go to sleep. She wills go to Spain next month. You can add an S, you can add an ED, you can add an ING. You have to leave it the way it is. ¿Estamos claro con eso? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. That's rule number one. Rule number two. Don't use to. The correct sentence is Clara might join them. That's it. Don't change it. Don't put anything else in it. Because if you add to Clara might to join them. What? What? The, what? Clara might to join them. No, 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 no. You must to finish your dinner. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You should not to smoke. They can to stay with us this summer. They can to stay with us this summer? No, no cuadra, no cuadra. Now, there are some options that you guys could use. Clara could join us. Clara might join us. Clara must join us. Clara should join us. They can stay. They can come. They can leave. These are things that you, that you can use. Son cosas que sí puedes ocupar. Clara could join us. Okay. Si quieres ocupar la palabra to join, you have to change it up a little bit. All right. Rule number three. If you need to use models in the negative form, only use not after the model verb. Don't add anything extra to the words. Don't use words like isn't, doesn't, don't, won't, wasn't, or aren't. Here's the correct example. You should not drink too much. That's perfect. You should not drink too much. What is not correct is you don't should drink too much. What? I didn't understand that. I don't can swim. I don't can swim. I don't know that one. We don't could call him. We don't could call him. Hmm. No, that doesn't work. Doesn't sound right. So, please make sure that you don't add anything extra to the models. Teacher, ¿y qué son esos models? Bueno, we already know what they are, right? So let's review them and what they do. Can. We can use can. Actually, there's three ways to use cans. You can use can 
because it shows ability. Beth can dance very well. Beth can dance very well. Can. Can shows permission. Can I use your car? Yes, you can. No, you can't. And can shows possibility. Driving in heavy rain can cause an accident. Estos son los tres formatos. El teacher puede bailar. Oh, que sí que se puede mover. The teacher can dance very well. Or my teacher can dance very well. For permission. Puedo ocupar tu, puedo ocupar tu carro. Puedo, tu, puedo ocupar tu computadora. Can I use your computer? Can I use your car? And possibility. Si tú manejas y está lloviendo fuerte, eso puede causar un accidente. It can cause an accident. So you can use it this way. Ahí están las tres. Can. Pueden ocupar could. Y eso se ocupa para possibilities. The roof could collapse if they don't do repairs. ¿Por qué no se suben a, a la duralita? Because the roof could collapse. ¿Ustedes se suben a la duralita? No, ¿verdad? No. No, 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 no. Ya está viejita. It's more, yeah. it's more than five years. Oh, no, that's it. You can't. <laughs> you can't. It's you can't dangerous. do it. Yeah, it's dangerous. You could, the roof could collapse. So don't go up on the roof. No se suba la duralita. It could collapse. May. Oh, permission. Esta es, ¿eh? May. Expresses permission. May I borrow your umbrella? Yes. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. Might. En la siguiente. Conveys possibility. I might move to Vietnam next year. I might move to Vietnam next year. Next one. Should. Is used for giving advice. You should revise the intro to your essay. You should check your car before you go far. Should. Ahora, esta de aquí es at to. Pero si tú lo estás diciendo en una sentence, escucha un poco diferente. You ara. Hay gente que dice al ara. You ought to check. You ought to. Pero en realidad son dos palabras. Y es ought to. Ought to is used to offer logical conclusions. After driving all day, you ought to be tired. Pasaste manejando todo el día. Tenés que estar cansado. You ought to be tired. Acuérdense, se pronuncia, you can pronounce it ara. Hay personas que dicen ara. You ought to be tired. Pero también se puede decir ought to. You ought to be tired. A ver, vamos con must. This expresses a strong obligation. You have to come on time if you don't want to miss the bus. Me, no, me salté. Disculpen. Sorry, sorry. You must be, you must be at the train station at 3 p.m. to meet the guest. You must. Tenés que estar ahí. No puedes llegar tarde. You must. Ahora sí, have to. A strong obligation para los dos. You have to come on time if you don't want to miss the bus. Have to. You have to. Will is used to state a promise. I will stop eating sugary and salty foods. I will. Shall expresses suggestion as used in the first person. Shall I pour you a cup of green tea? Shall, 
Shall I pour you a cup of green tea? Wood shows habits in the past. He would visit his mom every Friday before she died. And it could also be a polite request. Would you close the windows, please? So, can se puede ocupar en tres diferentes ocasiones. Tenemos could, may, might, should, ought to, must, have to, will, shall, and dos versiones de would. A ver. Ustedes ya se podían los modales, the models, and how they are being used. Yes, Model. I, models. Yes. All right. So in the section 1.8 of our website, our work environment, you guys can see that it's the request with models, which is what we have covered so far here. And yes. here, I was going to get you guys, let me see. Here's where we're going to do the models. Little models exercise. Simple. Simple for us. Simple and quick. And as a team. Okay. I want you guys to read the first one, number one. And I want you guys to tell me, what can we use? What models can we use here? And the options are can't, could, can, and could not, or couldn't, could not. Okay? Can't. A ver. Vamos. Ignacio Blank skate very well. He should practice a lot. Can't. Can't. A ver. Or a. Ignacio can't skate very well. He should practice a lot. That sounds pretty good, right? Ignacio can't. All right. Let's go to number two. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one has a couple options. Yes. A, B, C, or D. B. B. Let's see here. So it would start off with, could he ride a bicycle at age of three? No. No. He can't, but he couldn't ride a tricycle. C. Which one? C. Could C? he ride a bicycle at the age of three? No, he couldn't, but... He could ride a tricycle. You know, that doesn't sound. Could he ride a bicycle at age of three? No. He couldn't, but if he could ride a tricycle. You know, that sounds pretty good. All right. A. 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 A ver, let's try that. Can he ride a bicycle at age of three? No. He can't. But he can ride a tricycle. So esta ocupa can dos veces. But he can ride a tricycle. I mean, that one is okay. He can ride a tricycle. Pero can he ride a bicycle at age of three? That one is asking like, maybe when he was three, like in something previous. Could he ride a bicycle at age of three? No, he couldn't, but he could ride a tricycle. Okay. A ver, let's try, the, let's try A one more time. Let's see how that sounds. Can he ride a bicycle at age of three? No, he can't. He can. But he can ride a tricycle. Yeah, that one. You know, it doesn't, I don't know, something doesn't feel right. But, I don't know. 
I'm having second thoughts. You know what? I'll leave C, and if we get it wrong, then my friend with A, you're going to get credit for that one. <laughs> All right, let's try one more. Let's try one more before we go. A ver, Martha. A ver, number three. Martha can draw pictures when she was five. Martha can draw pictures when she was five. I don't know. It doesn't sound. No, could Martha, Martha could draw pictures when she was five. That's going past, going back. How old is Martha now? Right. It's important. But that one is that one. Martha could draw pictures when she was five. También se puede ocupar como negative, right? Martha couldn't draw pictures when she was five. All right, let's let's try that out. Let's see how it looks. And then we'll finish the ones, the rest for tomorrow. A ver, vamos, a ver dónde está esta. Uy, son bastantes. A lot of work, a lot of work. A ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Oh my God, we got them right. Yeah, man. Good for you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, well done. We're going to continue some of these on this worksheet tomorrow. And uh -huh. we're also going to, we're going to complete section one. And I think that's pretty much it because there's a reading exercise. And then we jump into section two. And then as you guys can see, a lot of the things that we're doing have to do with conversation already. So, ojo con eso, ojo con eso. We're going to try to include a little bit more exercises with these. And tomorrow, I'm hoping that to include you guys a little bit more. All right? And see how we can get you guys involved in participation with the worksheets. Doing it like one by one. Because there's a lot. So, yay. A lot of work. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, les voy a dar un minuto de regreso. Ay, gracias, teacher. No, hombre, no se hubieran preocupado. Ay, Dios mío, ¿qué voy a hacer yo con ese minuto? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. Take thank care, you. and I'll Bye. see you guys tomorrow, okay? Thank Remember you. my number. If you don't mm -hmm. have my number, take, go to the chat section. Ahí está mi número. Please send me any questions that you have. If you have a screenshot, send me the screenshot, and I'll help you out. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Take care. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.